<laughs> I tell you what, I must be dreaming, you know, because five years ago, the last year under Jeff Capel, this OU men's program was down in the dumps. 14 wins and a whopping 18 losses and going nowhere. Joe Castiglione had to make a change. He decided to hire Long Kruger, a coach who many thought the game had passed him by up there in years and had not coached in a Final Four since 1994 when he took Florida there. And it was no question of work in progress. And from his first year, 2012, they won 15 games. Look at now. Almost double. 29 wins. Probably going to have the player of the year in Buddy Heald. And these last two games, the West Regional semifinal against A&M, and then Saturday, the crowning achievement against Oregon, top-seeded Ducks, and Dana Altman, the former assistant under Kruger, the Sooners not only won against Oregon, and like I said, beat A&M two days prior, they dominated both teams. They absolutely dominated the Aggies and the Ducks, and they did so by beating both at their own game. And it was simply put, okay? They won by rebounding, by being more physical. And great thing about the Sooners, too, it wasn't just that, okay? There were so many other variables, and... On Thursday, we saw, as, as I documented before against the Aggies, it was balance, okay? Heald got 17 points, but we saw Woodard that night be a leader and get 22 and Christian James coming off the bench and getting 12 points, all three points as a result. Now, when you look at Saturday, Buddy Heald, who's given us so many great memories, and we know time's running out as far as us Sooner fans getting to see him on the college level, okay? Hopefully, we get two more games to see what Buddy can do. He's going to be a National Player of the Year. He's already a two-time Big 12 Player of the Year. And as many great performances as he's given us, as many great memories, Saturday might have been at the zenith, at the top of the mountain. How about 37 points? Eight three-pointers. The guy was incredible. 13 of 20, including, by the way, a stretch in which he had 11 points in just six minutes. Um, Buddy healed, no matter what Morgan threw at him, Hill was ready. And there was nothing Morgan can do. Sooners, the last 25 minutes of this game, led by double digits. In fact, they took an 11-point lead and made it into a 19-point lead at one point late in the first half. You know, Isaiah Cousins, good game for him. Even though I know, again, he missed a lot more shots than he made. He scored, you know, eight of those points late in that first half that helped Oklahoma balloon that lead. Also, seven assists and five rebounds. That's another thing, too. For the Sooners to see them play team ball again effectively, they had a ton of assists the other night against the Aggies. Well, that momentum continued on Saturday against the Ducks. Team basketball, 13 first-half assists. And when you do that, obviously, you're giving yourself better looks. It doesn't always have to be Buddy Heald, even though... Tonight, he had a statistic giant game. But again, you, you saw, you know, Jordan Woodard in double figures with 13. It wasn't a 22-point game, but tonight didn't have to be. You have got guys contributing along with Buddy Hill. And when you have that, this Oklahoma team is proving that you can compete with anybody in the country. And you can beat anybody in the country. An Oregon team that had won 30 games this season. Dana Altman's done one heck of a job. He's made Oregon basketball nationally relevant. Give him credit for that. But as I mentioned during the pregame, okay, as I mentioned during the, the pregame the day before, on Friday, Oklahoma's been battle-tested. You know, you, you, you beat Villanova early in the year, and I know Villanova's going to be a major test come next week. I'll talk more about the Wildcats in a second. You beat Wisconsin, who got to the Sweet 16, almost got to the Elite Eight, and you dominate the Badgers early in the year. You come close to beating Kansas both times you, you, you faced them. Um... You beat West Virginia two out of three. You beat Iowa State two out of three. And those teams had real good years. You sweep Baylor. And I know Oregon beat Baylor as well. But the point is, is that the Sooners played in a tougher conference. They, they had a tougher schedule. They've been more battle-tested. And that's why playing in a league like the Big 12 helped. That's why playing those tough games before January helped. And you know what? When you look back at it now, that February where the Sooners lost four games, maybe that helped them develop character and realize that, you know what, you can't keep playing like the way you were in February. 
you know, losing at Tech, losing at Kansas State, you know, losing games you know you should have won. But you mature, you learn from it, you become stronger, and in the end you persevere. You not only can beat those good teams like A&M and like an Oregon team that won 30 this season, but you can end up winning in impressive fashion, and that's what the Sooners have done these, these past two games. Okay, They learned. And Long Kruger is one heck of a coach. And the one thing we saw the Sooners do was, was play very effective on defense. Again, the rebounding war won by the Sooners, especially early on, offensively and defensively. And we mentioned superstar Buddy Hill. Well, you know, we know that Oregon doesn't necessarily have a superstar like Buddy Hill, but then again, most teams don't. But the one guy that you saw really come through for Oregon in the Duke game in the regional semis on Thursday was Dylan Brooks. You know, Dylan Brooks played nearly 30 minutes against the Sooners on Saturday. He only had seven points and he had three turnovers. Not going to get the job done. And you give the Sooners credit for that. Also, too, um, was the fact that the three-point shot was really Oklahoma's best friend. We mentioned that Heald had eight threes. But also, don't forget, too, uh, the performance of, of – the Sooners in general from three-point range, 50% Oregon couldn't match, only 19% from behind the arc. Maybe the biggest difference maker of the game that the Sooners were more opportunistic from three-point range. And that's the big thing about college basketball since the inception of the three-point shot nearly 30 years ago. It changes everything. You can get back into a game fast with a three, or you could also, um, you know, blow a team out or get true separation from a team with a three-point shot. And that's what Oklahoma did. You know, from the field, 47%. Oregon, only 39% from the field. That was a difference maker, too. And Oklahoma was a little bit more efficient from the free throw line as well. Now, the Sooners did turn the ball over quite a bit. That, that's, that's one area that they, no question, have to work on. Um, and they have seven days to work on it before that rematch with Villanova in Houston next Saturday. But the bottom line for the Sooners... We really saw them um, get the job done in the paint. And also, two with second chance points. Sooners winning that department, too, 15 to 4. So, for the Sooners, fifth time in school history that they're going to the Final Four. And um, they're going to be facing a Villanova team. That biggest difference, I would say, between that Nova team that Oklahoma saw in December and now, this Villanova team right now, and Kansas will be the first to tell you. Villanova plays better defense, and that was the key today, and uh, their win over the Jayhawks. An upset, if you will, because Kansas wasn't just the number one seed in the, in the South region. They were the number one overall seed, okay? They were, you know, the number one top seed amongst all the number one seeds. I mean, some had Kansas picked to win a national championship, and I know me personally as a Sooner fan, I wanted Oklahoma and Kansas part three because of those Two losses that Oklahoma suffered to the Jayhawks, including that triple overtime loss in, in Lawrence, that great regular season game uh, back in January. But, you know, if you're the Sooners, you can't be choosy. And you can't just think that because you beat Nova back in December that you can punch your ticket for the national championship the night of April the 4th. That happens, you're going to end up just like Kansas, okay? Realize that Villanova did something on Saturday that Oklahoma did not do in two attempts, and that is beat the Jayhawks. That ought there ought to get Oklahoma's attention. Sooners should be able to get a lot of fans at this game via short plane ride, but I think a lot of OU fans will be making that uh, trip on the interstate south, about 500 miles, about seven and a half to eight hours to get to Houston, and they should get a lot of representation, a lot of crimson and cream, um, and they've got just as good a shot as anybody and win a national championship. I'll have a preview of Oklahoma and Villanova soon. Uh, congrats to the Sooners. Um, they keep it going, going to the Final Four for the fifth time, but for the first time since 2002 when Kelvin Sampson was coaching. For, Long, for Long Kruger, it's his first Final Four coaching since he took the Florida Gators to the Final Four back in 1994. Sooners win 80-68, to heading to Houston and the national semifinals. Thanks, everybody.